guys, so welcome back to Philly Walking. It's me, Eldi again, and today we are going to be exploring the historic district of St. Augustine in the state of Florida. Now, these people say that this is one of the first settlements or the nation's first colony in the United States. And I know you may be wondering, why do they say this if we have been taught in their history classes that the pilgrims arrived in Plymouth Plantation. Why is this then the historic district of America? That's what we're going to be exploring. We're going to be finding out what this place has to offer, what kind of things you can see here. I am here in St. George Street and it's um, a pedestrian only street, very much like El Conde in Santo Domingo, except it has a different flair to it. Very cool, everything is very pretty. And if you want to take a tour with me in America's first colony here in Florida, stick around. So this right here is St. George Street. It's a pedestrian only walking mall. It's similar to El Conde in Santo Domingo, except with a different type of vibe. It is historic, but in a different way. I don't know if you can tell. It's very, very cute, full of little shops that you can explore, dine, uh, get souvenirs and all that stuff. I mean, even the little signs on top of the shops look super antique, super cute. Can you tell? Everything, everything has that historic theme to it, that historic feel. Okay, so I just drove about an hour and 50 minutes, almost two hours, to get here. So as soon as I came, I wanted to use the bathroom. And I noticed that a lot, a lot of the shops that you're going to see, especially in St. George Street, say no public bathroom. So they would only let you use the bathroom if there is a paying customer in there. And um, I finally found public restrooms and they're very adequate, very nice size, very clean, have everything you need. And they are right here where it says Casa del Hidalgo. So there you go. There's even a sign that says public restroom and that's where you can go ahead and use it. And this right here where you see the two pillars is the official entrance to the city of St. Augustine. Back in the day, all the crops, all the food, every import and export came out through these gates over here. If you're new here, let me remind you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, remember you can donate directly to my channel by hitting the super thanks button. And let's all say hi to this guy that was very happy to see me with my camera. <laughs> I don't know anything about this town at all except that it is a historic landmark and a historic district. We're going to be taking the trolley tour so we can hop on and hop off on the different sites there is to explore in here in St. Augustine. The trolley tour costs around $34 for adults and children under four years old don't pay anything at all. It lets you hop on and hop off from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And you can see all the sites. They also give you discounts on the different museum entrances and the site entrances if you want to go that route. If not, you can pay them uh, separately. I really enjoyed my trolley tour. It was very easy to find one of these kiosks to pay for it. They gave you a map so you can pick and choose what stops you want to go to. And it beats having to walk around the whole time. Even though the town isn't that big, it's better to just see everything and pick and choose what stops you want to make. Also, our drive was very, very funny and highly engaging and had lots of insight and information. I'm going to leave some of the audio so you can hear it. Well, lucky for y'all. I'm not decided to forget about something like this. Because ladies and gentlemen, as of right now, you're driving every part of that burial ground. So if that creeps you out, you're welcome. The trolley tour has more than 22 stops you can make to hop on and hop off the entire town and I can tell you I was so happy and so amazed to see how beautiful these historic sites were. As you can see on your screen, everything is very well kept and has a beautiful ambiance to it. 
one of the optional stops is literally the oldest house in America and it dates back to the early 1700s it's also a museum the price to enter is about ten dollars so you have the option of going and checking it out we even have our beautiful sunset cruise I took the sunset cruise I didn't realize that it's kind of for couples I went on there and learned like a weirdo but I still had fun because you gotta know how to love yourself people the trolley also takes you by the first Ripley Believe It or Not Museum that you can hop off and look at. There is a replica of a David statue right here in the patio. They had to cover it up with shrubbery because people were laughing and snickering at his manly bits, if you know what I'm saying. The oldest living resident in the entire town is called the Old Senator and it's actually a tree. You can also stop by and take your picture here. This gorgeous street is called Magnolia Street and it is dubbed one of the most photogenic places in the entire world. It has been on the cover of National Geographic magazine for that same reason in more than two occasions and it also is the place where Forrest Gump was filmed. You know that famous little part in the movie when he starts running and his braces fall off and his girlfriend runs behind him, run Forrest, run! Well, this is exactly where it was filmed, not in Savannah, Georgia, where some people would think it was. After a very insightful morning, we were very hungry, so we decided to grab a bite to eat. There are so many different little cafes and different pubs and different restaurants that we can choose. We ended up choosing this one. It looked very neat and there wasn't a lot of people because some of these restaurants get very, very full. Uh, everything was very, very old school. I like this little sink that they had uh, that you can wash your hands in. Uh, they had a little bar area and the food was very decently priced and the flavor well let me just show you my face settlement at Jamestown, 55 years older than the settlement at Plymouth Rock. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. There are so many things to see and do here at St. Augustine that you might be overwhelmed. Like if you want to just come here and just sit at a cafe and relax, that's that's all good. But if you want to do like some serious sightseeing or looking at the museums there are, there are so many museums and different things that I suggest if you don't want to break the bank, you go ahead and look online and pick and choose what you want to do beforehand that way you budget it before you come here because if you pay for every single thing you're gonna literally break the bank in a single day so um, what I suggest is you um, be selective of the things you want to look at and you want to see up close and then uh, you do it because there's so many so many things and this is another reason why I truly enjoyed the trolley tour because they gave you information on each and every stop so you had a more informed decision on whether you wanted to stop there or not. This hotel had two firsts. It had running water in most rooms and electricity in every room. This hotel had electricity 
three years before our very own White House in Washington, D.C. Now, this smaller building held the four coal-driven generators that provided the electricity to the hotel. Those generators were designed and installed by Mr. Thomas Alva Edison himself. Folks, there are 79 Tiffany glass windows in this structure. It is the largest collection of Tiffany glass anywhere in the world. They're protected by bulletproof plexiglass, and they're only worth a mere $131 million today, everybody. As you probably heard our driver talk about the astonishing things and buildings that there are here, um, you can see that St. Augustine does have a fancier side to it, all because of a man named Flagler. He basically was the owner of like the first fancy hotel, the first college, the first university. So St. Augustine does have a fancier side to it, and I really enjoyed that aspect as well. I actually found this indoor little shopping mall so very cute. Look at the architecture. Doesn't it remind you of like Quincy Market up in Boston, that type of style? Um, if you have been to Quincy Market, hit me up in the comments if you agree. That kind of like the architecture and style of this whole place remind you of Quincy Market. But I should say Quincy Market does have like a more oriented to food. This is more of a plaza for... Um, clothing, accessories, um, and different type of uh, souvenirs as well. I just want to take this time to give a huge heartfelt shout out to my two super thinkers and those are Randy Thomas and Juan Carlos Santana. Thank you so much for your kindness and for your donations to my channel and obviously for your love and for your comments and your support. I really appreciate it. Here is Castillo de San Marcos, right in front of the marina here at St. Augustine. This is not so much a castle as it is a fort. Come along with me to check it out. It was made to defend the land from the French. So it was made by the Spanish to defend the land from the French by a specific material that was basically bomb proof in those days. So let's check it out. Come along with me. So this behind me is the oldest masonry fort in America. And I was truly surprised because when I was in preschool, middle school, you know, they teach you that the first settlers of the United States were in the Plymouth Plantation up in Boston. But no, when you come here to St. Augustine, you learn that this is actually the first settlement. So the Spaniards came here uh, like 40 or 50 years before the English actually dropped off at Plymouth Plantation. Now they were fighting over this land, the Spaniards and the French for a while. And so in the defense of the land in St. Augustine, they built this fort over here to protect their stance. And this fort still stands today. It overwatches the beautiful, beautiful marina. I wish you guys can um, have like uh, 3D experience because when you come here, it has such a cool feeling to it. It kind of reminds me of Fortaleza Osama in Santo Domingo. I know that if you're not new to my channel, you would know that um, the colonial zone in Santo Domingo is one of my favorite places in the country. And so this kind of reminds me of the same type of concept. Um, obviously, the old town has a different feel to it, but it is kind of the same concept. So that's very much appreciated. The construction of this fort started in 1672 and since then it has been under constant attack from the French and the Spanish who are defending these walls right here. You can see that there are centuries of water damage in these walls but they are still standing strong and also they uh, received a lot of gunfire as you might imagine and they're still over here uh, overseeing the pier here at St. Augustine.
All right, guys, this just about wraps up my little tour of St. Augustine in Florida. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give that like button a tap and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget about that. This is me signing out and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.